I'm back. Yes, I still work here. For those of you who don't know, I went away on a lovely holiday for about five weeks to Europe, went to Germany, Switzerland, Sweden. <laughs> Met Peter, this guy who works for me, I guess, on Hazel. Got some uh, fun videos coming up with Peter. Anyway, point being, I'm back now. I'm back in the office. This is the Studio Cherno official headquarters, I guess, in Melbourne, Australia. And as one does after he returns from a holiday, I realize that I need to really rapidly get back to work and catch up with everything. And more importantly, it is definitely time for us to release the next version of Hazel. So for those of you a little bit out of the loop, we released Hazel 2023.1. There's a video up there. I never know which corner. That video goes over all of the kind of major features that were in that release release. At this point in time, this kind of big professional version of Hazel, however you want to call it, is only available to Patreon supporters. That's how we fund the development of Hazel. If it wasn't for the supporters, we would not have... Hazel would not be at this stage whatsoever because I wouldn't be working on it full time, neither would Peter. But if you take a look at when that video was released, well, it was, it was a while ago. It was a while ago. And I believe the original timeline for Hazel 2023.2 was like June or something. I think we wanted to do it quarterly. Uh, and it's September and it's still not out. So I figured that I have no idea what's going on because I haven't been in the office for like uh, probably six to seven weeks now. I certainly haven't been keeping up with Hazel and the rest of the team and seeing what they've been doing. And we need to get this release out the window. So I figured I would kind of document this process, take you guys along with me because I have no idea what I'm doing. So it's probably a good kind of opportunity to show how on earth we go from not having anything at the moment or me not knowing anything to actually having a full on release tested, you know, QA'd out the window and I guess a video published and everyone notified that, hey, we have a new kind of stable version of Hazel. So that's what this video is. Enjoy. So this is what I like to call the, the Cher Cherno's three steps to success or rather Cherno's three steps to like get a product released. First step is consolidation, which just means like tying everything that you want released together, AKA reach out to the team, go through any of your like local changes or fixes or anything that's not committed, make a list of everything that needs to be merged into like a staging or a release branch for testing. Once you've got all of that figured out, testing slash QA. So going through everything, making sure that we run through all of our like test cases, test scenes, everything works, the engine doesn't crash, that kind of stuff. And then finally three is release, which doesn't just mean releasing the actual like software and the actual product, but it also means going through and writing up all the documentation for it. So like the change log and any other associated feature documentation that you might need for an actual release. You know, whenever people hear that I'm making my own game engine and they, they're kind of following along and they're considering maybe making their own, they always ask whether or not math is important to make a game engine. Now, I usually always flat out just say yes, um, because I, I mean, I think it is, but the whole kind of subject of whether or not math is important for programmers, like, I, I don't know, I feel like you could talk hours about that because it's just so specific to what you are doing with that programming language, what you're using that tool for, and it's probably honestly just a topic for a future video. But I did wanna say that if you are looking to elevate your math experience, then you can do that for free with the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant.org. For those of you who don't know, Brilliant.org is an amazing website filled with lots and lots of really high quality courses on various STEM topics. They've got some great computer science stuff that you can use to kind of ease into the whole kind of programming mindset. They'll help you think like a programmer. But then, as I mentioned, like math. Brilliant is my favorite way to learn math on the internet. The reason why is because all of their courses are extremely visual and interactive. Like what better way to learn math than just by seeing it in front of you in a visual way, having these like widgets you can play with, getting quizzed after the lessons to help you like retain that information and the wide variety of topics they cover, everything from the everyday math course, which is there for beginners to ease you into math, all the way through to like algebra, linear algebra, calculus. You know, this stuff is really, really useful for game engines and the fact that it's presented visually, you know, you're making a game engine, you're making something that is very visual. And so I think a lot of us really are visual learners and to see this content presented in such a way is just amazing. And what's even more amazing is that Brilliant.org has a 30 day free trial. So you can take a look at their entire platform, all of their courses for free for 30 days and see if you like it. And if you do, they've been nice enough to offer the first 200 people 20% off an annual membership. Just go to Brilliant.org slash the channel. Link will be in the description below. Huge thank you as always to Brilliant.org for sponsoring this video. Okay, so what I didn't quite share with you guys was that I had a call with Zero X yesterday, AKA Jim. He's 
one of our wonderful volunteers that's working on Hazel. His system is animation. That's what he's responsible for. And you guys might remember him from the animation in Hazel video, the story of animation in Hazel, which will be up there. Anyway, I'm just introducing all the characters as I go along. Which, by the way, on the topic of introducing the characters, maybe I should introduce the Hazel team properly. Enjoy this cool animation. So of course over here at the top there's me, the project lead. My biggest responsibility is probably just overseeing the entire project, making sure that everyone's working together nicely and all these systems kind of fit together. I think that that's like, because you know when you have just a group of engineers and they all have their own ideas, you know, you can't have them all build the engine as if it was their own because more than likely they're not gonna you know, synergize well. They're not gonna like have the same kind of code style, have the same ideas. They're also not gonna have the same experience. They wouldn't have gone through the exact same path in life that led them to be like the software engineer they are today. So that's probably my biggest responsibility, but then there's also the renderer. I'm the only one on the team at the moment who just actively works on the renderer. So I'm in charge of that system. And then there's also some other stuff like runtime and optimization and well, really anything that needs doing, I have to do obviously. And then we have Peter. So Peter is a software engineer who officially works for Studio Cherno. He's basically in charge of two major systems and that is the physics system and scripting. He's also a bit of a generalist as you would expect from any kind of small team, but physics and scripting are kind of his two major systems. And then we have the volunteers. So Jim and Jay have been around for a long time. I've put this kind of green border around the volunteers and an orange border around Studio Cherno just so that's clear. But yeah, Jim and Jay, they both report to me. Jim is also known as Zero X. He's mostly in charge of the animation system. He wrote it. There's a great video up there that talks about how that kind of came to be. And then Jay wrote the entire audio engine for Hazel, as well as a lot of the kind of I am GUI UI style that we use in our tools. And then as our newest addition, reporting to Peter, we have Emily. And Emily has basically come along fairly recently and just added Linux support to Hazel. So we'll be talking about that in a future video as well. So that's the team. That's the current team as it stands at the moment. So hopefully now you know who all of the characters are. Anyway, yesterday we had a bit of a catch up chat. So I know like what he's working on. I can actually see him logging tickets very well in Jira. He's quite a professional. So I basically just made sure of a couple of things. First of all, what work he thinks is stable enough and ready for release. And he's told me that that stuff has already been merged into the dev branch. We have a kind of dev branch, which is like a central in development, non-released kind of non-stable potentially branch where all of the other people on the team can merge in their feature branches when they deem them like acceptable for, you know, kind of like widespread use or testing, you know, throughout the whole team. But it's still kind of an internal branch in the sense that like there are no guarantees about its stability, but our general workflow for releases is that everything from that dev branch is kind of, you know, ready for release minus official kind of QA testing. So you shouldn't be merging stuff into dev if it's not stable, or at least if you haven't tested it. That's what your own kind of personal, you know, feature branches or whatever are for. So Jim's already merged like a bunch of stuff into dev. He's even recorded a bunch of videos for me as to like what the features are. He's got a test scene that I can explore as well. So that's kind of the first point of like, what what is it that we are releasing of his work and what does he want kind of tested and released here? And then the second thing was, because remember at the start I said two points, I spent so long on point one that I forgot that I said that, but I did, I think. Let's rewind that. So I basically just made sure of a couple things. So the second point is, how do we even test that? So because we are like what I like to call an unofficial organization, meaning that like, you know, we're not like some corporation that has a development director and official kind of, you know, harshly enforced corporate strategies for software development. We're pretty lax here. Like we're pretty loose, we're pretty chill. And so because we are, ultimately the burden of like, you know, QA testing falls on to us as a team. We don't have a dedicated QA division or anything like that. So it means that I need to know as the kind of leader of this project, the work that you've done and the system that you've kind of, you know, built and all of the new features, like how, how does that even work? How do I even test it? How does the rest of the team know that it's like stable and good to go? So that's kind of like a massive area. And that's something that we really need to uh, focus on. I'm probably gonna make some videos about this coming up as well, because as a small team, that is obviously undertaking quite an ambitious project. Like we we obviously want to spend as less time as possible testing stuff and 
more of the time on actually developing new features and kind of improving existing systems. But there's clearly no way around, you know, at least two people on the team, so we'll say me as the project lead, and then the person who wrote the feature, understanding, you know, the breadth kind of of that particular feature and how to test it and how to basically validate that it is in fact working as it's supposed to. Because without that, I can't really release this next version of Hazel because I don't know if the feature that has been written is actually working properly as it's intended. And also that it's not gonna like, I don't know, bring down the engine in a crash or something and reduce everyone's kind of user experience. Uh, anyway, the reason I'm in this camera angle, by the way, is really because I've been looking at Fork. Um, I was gonna get to that eventually. These devlogs are all, are all over the place as usual, but you know, looking at kind of Fork here, Fork is a Git client, by the way, it's the one that I happen to use. It just easily lets me see kind of every single commit that goes into Hazel across like all of the branches. So I can kind of see what's going on. I can see what kind of stuff has been integrated into, into dev. That's really, really important when it comes to documenting the new features as well as the change log and also so obviously the prior kind of QA testing that needs to go into it as well. So 0x slash Jim is done. Peter as well, I've had a chat to him. He's mostly been working on fixes because he's working on a massive new kind of feature for Hazel and that's not ready yet for this release. So he's been mostly kind of managing like the rest of the team, I guess, while I've been away, as well as making sure that like certain crashes and fixes get fixed. Jay, who is our audio guy, is also working on some really, really cool, massive new tech, which we will discuss in future videos for sure. But that's also kind of not ready for this release, so nothing to worry about there. And then there's the new renderer. Yeah, Renderer 2023 is officially the name of that branch. That's my thing. That's me rewriting the whole renderer. That apparently hasn't actually been released yet. Uh, it feels like it has because everyone has basically been using that Renderer 2023 branch, at least to some extent. It's almost become the new dev. It's always a really, really good sign of like mismanagement when one of your feature branches becomes like the new mainline branch. Like that, that's just gold. What am I doing? Anyway, so that really needs to be polished up and uh, shipped. Now the good news is because people have been using it so much and I'm pretty sure we shipped the last Lottom Dare game on that branch. We know that it's like stable. The new renderer is good. Uh, you know, it's pretty much good to go, but there are just a few missing features that I really should have finished, but haven't. And that's just to do with like some physics, I think visualization in the level editor. So like, because I rewrote the whole renderer, it meant that like we switched to a completely different way of like writing render passes and kind of organizing, I guess, the render pipeline for our all of our rendering. And so part of that work was bringing across every existing existing kind of render pass or render feature that we had into this new system. And the way that I kind of, you know, worked through that is I prioritized the kind of runtime features so that we could actually ship that last game jam game. So that meant that things like, you know, just the visualization of physics colliders and stuff in Hazelnut, the editor, that obviously wasn't seen as important since that wouldn't make it into the shipped product. But I obviously need to make sure that that's kind of carried across into the new uh, into the new release, because otherwise <laughs> it's kind of a regression. It's kind of like us taking a little bit of a step back. It's like, yes, we've got this new renderer, it's much better, it's much faster, but you're also missing that feature that you like to use. So, sorry. And we want to avoid that as much as possible. So yeah, as I mentioned, I had a bunch of stuff that I had to finish up for the new renderer. So that's basically what I spent today on. Just kind of going through everything, making sure that all the, all the renderer features worked and filling in the blanks, just going through everything that I had pushed to the last minute. Luckily, there wasn't anything major, like whatsoever that needed to be done. I kind of knew this, but it was just a case of like bringing something to like 95% done, but then just not kind of pushing it all the way to completion. In retrospect, of course, I wish that I had because it just meant that I wouldn't have to worry about this. And because it had been so long, because it had been like two months, two or three months probably, since the last time I actually actively was working on this, I forgot a lot of it. Of course, I did and that's another reason why it's better to just finish it straight away in the first place because if I had just done that then I mean there's probably like two hours of work actually left but it took me the whole day because I had to spend time remembering everything and so that's a little pro tip to you guys just push yourself finish what you're doing and then just relax don't be lazy I should watch these videos myself